Welcome everyone. I will hand things over to Elvis so that we can talk about composing and as mentioned, uh, start working in the hub. Hello everyone. I hope everyone's okay and still recovering from our daylight savings time change. Um, so while the reason we're doing this and the reason that we're uh, so focused on composition and, and this initial step is what we've sort of been trying to, um, to get across uh, from the very beginning, which is if we are able to get a lot of these things out of the way early on, especially in this state in where in this moment in which the, um, the document, whatever the manuscript, uh, whatever you may want to call it, um, is malleable. If you can get things out of the way now, it's a lot easier than trying to do that uh, later on when things are typeset or when things are at a stage where um, you'll, it's, it's a lot less manual. It's a lot less um, easier uh, to change. It often involves um, a lot of more people, a lot more time and whatnot. So uh, the reason, again, that we're focusing on composition and the reason that we're sort of teaching um, this and focusing so much on this is because uh, once you get a handle of this, everything else, especially in the well-formed document workflow, but outside, outside of it as well, uh, will um, sort of click and make sense. Um, so we've been, we've been saying a lot that it's okay to not have things, um, you know, click right away and to not have things um, sort of just make sense. But just from our interactions um, in the group and from what we've seen in the class, I think a lot of us are, are getting it and, are, and it's clicking actually um, right away. So um, maybe this is something that you're, you know, loving and that you're, you're saying, hey, this is amazing. I want to keep doing this. Or maybe this is something that you're getting and you're like, yeah, I will be teaching somebody else how to do this. Um, whatever path you take, we'll talk a little bit more about that as the class um, uh, continues. But whatever path you take, whether you take this on yourself or whether you take give this to somebody else in your team or at your institution, um, the act of composition is something that is good for everyone, I think, to, to understand. Um, so yeah, so before we actually continue with where we left off, um, or actually before we continue reviewing the homework, um, which we'll do our breakout rooms in a little bit, I want to make sure that everybody got that email that I sent to the group uh, indicating that we um, have to create uh, projects um, in the hub uh, in order to be able to do the next part of what we'll be doing today in the class. So um, I saw, let me actually go on my screen here. So I can actually check how many people have actually created their, um, their, uh, their project. If you have not, can I get a um, nod or a sort of a sign that you have not created that and you'd like to sort of go through that at this point um, rather than later? Um, I don't think that I have. Okay. Yeah, I haven't either. Okay, good. I don't think that I received the email. Oh, okay. Well, that's interesting because I saw some people did create it. I think Sunny, you're one of them. Um, but let's check. Okay, so I, I have two people that haven't. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just quickly check. This is taking quite some time to load. Quickly check where we're at and then go from there. Okay, so I see that Myra has done it, Nathan, um, Sunny. And last name Charney, I'm not getting the name. So, okay, I think we've all, so we've got a couple people that haven't done it. So I'll just quickly run through it and you can run this um, with me. So let me just bring it up over here and share my screen. So my view might be a little bit different just because I am an admin on the digital hub, which is why I can see everybody's projects. So I see here the ones that have already been created. Um, the, um, the way to create a file or excuse me, a project in the digital hub, um, you of Hold course on. Have, Elvis, uh -huh. I'm sorry to interrupt. I just want to make sure that everybody has 
um, gotten logged into the hub so they can follow. Right. It might take a minute. Okay. Do you guys know where to go? I just want to make sure. Give us a sign. It's hard to see you all now that Elvis is sharing his screen. So if you can. Yeah. I'm logged in. Okay. okay. Thank you. So, and Jeremy is also I, logged in. Yeah. I'm and Sunny, in. you're logged in? Yeah. Okay. I have a uh, redirect issue, my browser is saying. So I'll keep working on it. Okay. It might be that it's taking a little bit longer. Um, doo -doo -doo. Okay, sorry to interrupt, just wanted to to make sure yeah. Start at the very, very beginning. Yes, yes. <laughs> I am known for taking things for granted. So <laughs> Okay. I'm in I'm in now. Okay, perfect. So I think everybody is in. Okay, so uh once you sign in, um just go over to Digital Hub if it doesn't take you there um immediately and you'll see this button here that says start a new project. Um, then you'll go ahead and click on that. And the very first thing is that it's going to ask you to create um, a pro to add a project code. So we're going to, um, what we're doing right now is we're doing OTN hyphen and then your first initial and then last name. And then once that's in, uh, just click this little uh, check mark that says update code. And then it'll ask you to put in other metadata, but that's um, optional. Um, as of now, we'll worry a little bit more about that later. So with that, the project has been created and we can actually upload files once we get to that point in our demo. Does anybody have any questions up to, up to now? Has everyone been able to create a project. You can see there the project name is in the top left corner of the screen, OTN e Ramirez. Please let us know when you guys see that because that this this step will be necessary for next steps in the class when we check the composition in the hub. I'm good. <laughs> thanks, Amy. Me too. Okay, Jeremy, thanks. Me too. Adam's giving the thumbs up. Great. Sunny's good. Nathan, Myra, you guys okay? Yeah, I think Myra had our, yeah. Okay, okay, super. They created before. Okay, so I'll stop screen sharing here. And are on our agenda. Um, next, I believe we're going to go over our homework assignment, and we're going to do the breakout rooms for that. So I'll, I'll let Karen introduce that part. Indeed, uh, I look forward to hearing how your homework went. I will split you guys into breakout rooms and we'll take probably around 15 minutes in there, depending on how things go. I'll check in uh, with each group to see how you guys progress. Are there any questions before we go into breakout rooms? Okay. Are there any questions or uh, things that you guys would like to discuss together as a group? Things that maybe came up in your breakout room that you think would be helpful for others to know or a fun discovery you made. Well, Adam disagreed with the answer sheet. <laughs> All right, let's hear it, Adam. Wait, you're muted. I can't tell if you're talking or not. Oh, I okay. did quickly go over before I hit space. It was on the, the second chapter glossary, uh, key terms. Um, I just did it as E-X-H and then E-X-U-L, F, E-X-U-L, down to E-X-U-L-L for an unnumbered list. Elvis, would you mind pulling it up on your screen since you're going to go back to working with it, I think. Let me unmute. And I should have just realized that there was a little issue in the answer sheet there. And 
So you're saying, Adam, that you would have done it almost um, as an exercise, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. None of the, like, I think you and I talked about last time, none of the glossary styles seem to really fit because there's no definitions here, but mm -hmm. they could have referenced something else, but I forget what you did more fancily. Yeah. <laughs> I like that word, fancy. So the reason why we're going with a UL is just for simplicity, but uh, as we were discussing actually in our group, because um, Myra was um, pointed it out, the key terms are often not um, part of, you know, like the, the main, you know, heading structure of, uh, of a chapter, especially in a textbook. Um, so um, I can see where we can make these, like, for example, sidebars. We made that, we simply made that choice for the sake of simplicity and, and keeping it um, to that. But if you run into a situation like that, what you did, which is saying, okay, I'm going to compose these um, as EXH and then EXUL and so on and so forth, and I'm going to be consistent throughout it, throughout the book, um, that is okay as long as you, you know, then, you know, either pull scribe in and ask us and say, hey, I did this, but I'm not really sure, or talk to the author, or talk to the, um, you know, the creator or whoever it is, the editor, maybe. Um, at, the, at that point, you'll want to like bring it up and say like, look, I compose these as this because key terms should be in their own little box right at the beginning and so on, especially because we're creating this textbook rather than part of, some, uh, a part of the main um, text flow. Um, and then you can have that discussion. And it might be that the, um, the author is like, no, I want them to be as a list and I want it that way. And that's the way that it is going to be um, but you know you can always have that um, that discussion um, so I would think that you are you're not wrong especially if um, you've gone ahead and done that consistently um, throughout um, and I think that that brings up that that point uh, very um, very clearly that there are sometimes that choices need to be made by the person that's composing and those choices may need to be clarified later on um, here at scribe we often uh, just as I was mentioning in our breakout room, we'll talk to somebody who is more experienced with composition, who's been doing it for a long time, um, and tell them like, hey, we think it's this, but it could also be X, Y, or Z. Um, and then that we can get that, that feedback. Um, so uh, hopefully that answers that question and, and puts to rest the, the, the uprising, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> the controversy. The controversy. <laughs> Any other questions or concerns about the homework? Can we have a copy of the answer sheet somewhere? <laughs> um, I think now after the class. Um, I don't know, Karen, what do you think? <laughs> well, I think tonight's or this week's homework mm -hmm. um, will still require some. OK, that's fine. Thank you. But after that, <laughs> it's all yours. We will share it. We will share it. Yeah, and maybe. Uh, I'm, I'm being halfway facetious. If you guys think it would be helpful and you'd like to have it in hand, uh, we mm -hmm. can certainly arrange for that. Yeah. Okay, so um, we are going to continue on with a bit more of an SAI demo. Uh, Elvis is going to talk about applying styles to non-regular paragraphs. And then he's going to introduce us to the hub, which you guys have already been in, and connect the hub to this composing process. And then finally, probably uh, about a quarter after the hour, um, we will be introduced to the refiner, um, which I think is the title of a, of a poor horror movie, perhaps, The Refiner. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm going to turn things back over to Elvis and uh, let us know if you need anything. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And we'll go back to that um, document that we were working on um, in um, our first demo, just because um, it's where we've left it off um, last time. Uh, like last time, uh, I'm gonna ask Mike to monitor the chat and answer questions, um, just because since we're not screen sharing, it's kind of difficult to see um, the chat. So where we left off um, last time, uh, we had already composed our heads, as you can see here, um, later on down here. We had left all the other paragraphs um, alone, and um, we had gone ahead and refined, um, not refined, excuse me, rendered um, the uh, character styles um, so that way they would actually be 
uh, compose. So for example, you'll see that this URL up here in the top left, you'll see that it is URL um, and so on and so forth through that. And so the next step in composing is actually going through and composing the paragraphs that are not regular paragraphs. As I mentioned before, we don't compose uh, regular paragraphs. The hub will take care of that and I'll show you how it does that. Um, but for now, we'll go ahead and compose the um, non-regular paragraphs. So space break paragraphs like PSEC um, and uh, specialized paragraphs like dialogue um, and equation and so on and so forth. And the reason that we do that is because while the hub will, will compose uh, normal paragraphs or unstyled paragraphs as P and apply uh, the articulation as needed. It will not do that. Um, it's not that smart yet. Um, it will not go through and compose things as SER or dialogue or um, EQ for equation and so on and so forth. So here we're going to go ahead and compose this as SEC. So I'll go back to my SER, excuse me, um, and we'll go back to the style galleries. I believe that that is in the that's in the front there. Yeah, there it is. And so you'll see, you're going to see something interesting that's going to happen here once we compose these paragraphs as SER. SER stands for series um, entry or series title, but like the actual entries in a series list. Uh, so if you can think of it, SER is like a list item, uh, just specialized for that front matter uh, section. So SER, you'll see that over here we'll only have one. Meanwhile, we have several um, instances in this list. And the reason for this is because of this little guy right here that indicates a soft break. I'm not sure if everybody can see it on their screen. I've highlighted it there. Um, so that, what that actually indicates is that that's not a real break, it's not a real paragraph break. And so what that'll do is saying, what this is actually saying is that this is all, all on one line. Um, so in order to get rid of that, right, and get rid of these optional uh, breaks, we'll bring up our search and replace, which is control H on a Windows PC, right? And we'll search, and this is a shortcut, um, I believe it's caret L. And that searches for these little soft breaks throughout. So that way you don't have to go through and like try to find them little by little. Um, and the reason we're doing this now is because we want to make sure that the SER uh, style is applied to each line and that this, when we take it to whatever other uh, format, won't all get globbed up into one line, which is what actually ends up happening with these soft breaks. And so we'll replace it with caret P. And carrot P is just for uh, carriage return, and that will create the hard breaks that we need. So carrot L and carrot P. And then we can actually test it out by hitting replace. Whenever you do a search and replace, um, especially while you're composing, you should always test it out, make sure that it's um, going to do what you need it to do. So if you notice the soft break changed into the hard break, and now you have two SER lines over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit replace all. It's gonna tell me how many it searched and replaced and hit okay. And now you see that this is all filled in. Each line is composed correctly as SER. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and close that. There aren't a lot of searches and replaces that you do while you are composing, but they are sometimes useful, especially when you know, for example, um, that you know chapter titles have certain colors or things like that you can actually search for colors and whatnot and we can get more in depth into that in another demo and so we're going to just go through and we're going to compose all the paragraphs that are not normal um, so and that are uh, space break paragraphs um, and that are specialized paragraphs so we won't we won't worry about this because that is just a normal paragraph, even though later on that becomes PF, the hub can handle that for you. So the hub can handle converting normal to P, uh, PF or PF as needed. But this one here is a specialized paragraph. That's an epigraph, as we saw in our homework. 
So we'll go ahead and compose it as EP, as you see here. And then this is an epigraph tail, and the uh, style for that is EPT. So we'll go ahead and apply that there, right? And again, we're not adding any articulation because the hub will take care of that for you. So we'll go through and we're going to make the assumption that these are all regular paragraphs uh, just because of the way that they are currently rendered. So there's no special indentation, there's nothing uh, strange that um, will indicate that it might be a different kind of paragraph, right? And so as we continue, we'll see that's a regular paragraph and we'll go down to this list. Now the hub can compose lists for you as well as long as they are list paragraph and as long as they're using these um, its words a uh, way of sort of numbering things. So Word will go through and create these um, fields. That's what these are called. Um, but they're not actually numbers. They're just Word um, rendering things as, um, as a number so that you can say, okay, this is the first item in this list. So the, the hub can actually co compose that for you. But um, in our case, we're, we have a, a list further down that we don't want to be composed as a regular numbered list or unnumbered list. Uh, so we're going to actually make these what we call literal or in other words, real. Because if I were to compose this now as a list, I'll show you what'll happen. I'm gonna load the default gallery. I believe lists, not bulleted list, I'm looking for numbered list. There it is. If I were to go ahead and compose that, notice how the number one was blown away. And in this case, it might not be a big deal. It's only a three item list, but if you have a list that is you know, quite large, 23, 25, 50 items, if you lose all your numbers, um, that, is, um, that, that can prove to be uh, quite difficult to go back in and add um, and not introduce errors. So I'm gonna go ahead and use Control Z to undo. And we're gonna make these um, numbers literal or in other words real so we're going to go up here to the SAI where it says cleanup you'll see list leaders and if you hover over it it'll give you a little description um, and it'll say that it'll turn word characters into literal characters so we'll go ahead and hit OK or excuse me click on this and then hit OK so list leaders is checked Hit OK it'll say cleanup complete You'll see that things now spaced out a little bit differently. And now when we click on these, we lost that gray shading that indicated that this was a field. Do we have any questions at this point? Okay, good. I'll take the silence as a yes. So now we can go ahead and compose this as NL. And you'll notice that the one, uh, the period and the tab stayed because they are now actual literal characters. So these are a sublist. So we're going to make these NL1s. Again, I'm not worried about um, articulation, spacing distinctions like F and L and S. Um, right now, all I'm worried about is calling it um, what it is. So we'll go here and compose those as NL. There we go. And now if we were to be treating this as a paragraph continued, which we won't for this case, we would go ahead and compose that now because pecan paragraph continued is a specialized uh, paragraph and the hub um, can't sort of parse that on its own. Um, reading is required to be able to do that. So we'll look at this one next, but we'll leave that as just P and this one we'll treat as an error. So if we look at this, we'll say, okay, this one is indented uh, and it seems to be um, you know, a special paragraph of some kind. So we'll treat that as a block quote. So again, style galleries, no default galleries, block quotation, and we'll just call it BQ. And you'll see that there's a little bit more indentation here on the right, a little bit more indentation on the left, and the font changed, but again, all this rendering is just so that you can see um, how, um, not how things are going to look, but just so that they can be differentiated uh, within Word. 
So continuing on, we're going to just go ahead and compose these as UL. And I'm going to be speeding up just a little bit now just so that we can get through all the specialized paragraphs without, um, uh, without losing time. So I'm going to go ahead and compose this. And I'm going to treat this as a bulleted list. So here, we'll say BL, compose that one as BL. And these are sub lists or sub bulleted lists. So BL1. You could also use unnumbered list here. Um, Scribe's default is to go uh, unnumbered list unless there is a specific reason why you need to differentiate between unnumbered and bulleted list. Um, in our case, since um, it's just easier uh, to explain to you bulleted list, excuse me. So here we come to that asterisk break. So we know that that is in body and that is a section break SEC. And so as you can see, what we're doing is we're composing everything that is not normal at this point. And this is the part where it usually takes a little bit longer um, because you are going through the document um, and looking for uh, those things that are different, right? Uh, here we have a little bit of dialogue. So we'll go here. Let's say. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and start closing some of these just to keep it clear. That's dialogue. This will treat as a regular paragraph, even though it seems kind of short. Um, but this is actually just leading into the next um, section here. And this we're going to treat as an exercise. And here's that list that I mentioned um, earlier that we don't want to treat like a regular numbered list because it is part of the exercise. So we'll go here. And I believe it is in curriculum. And so we'll treat this test your knowledge as an exercise head. The following as EX, which just stands for, um, it's almost like a uh, paragraph inside, um, inside an exercise. And then these as EX and L for exercise numbered list. And here we come to some poetry. We can tell because of the stanza breaks. And if we read it just a little bit, we'll know that it's, some poetry. So some reading is involved in composition. We just encourage people to not get absorbed and start looking for very tiny little details. You just want to give it a quick once over. And so here, I believe we'll go here to sense line and poetry, right? The hub can't distinguish between what's a standard break and what's not. So we use SLF um, here. This is one of those instances where you do have to worry about articulation um, just because of that fact that the hub won't be able to actually read through and indicate when something where there's a standard break. So in this case, what we'll do is we'll call this SLF and we'll compose those first. We'll go ahead and do that. We don't have to worry about the first one because the hub will be able to compose that because it's going through and it'll say this line before it was a regular paragraph and this is the first instance of a sense line so this will automatically be SL, SLF. So this we can compose as SL. Any questions up to this point? Um. I have a question. Why is um, whose words these are? I think I know. Why is that not an SLF? Oh, wait, let me see you. The first. Oh, yeah. the first one. The reason why we you can compose it as an SLF because it will become that. But the hub will actually take care of that for you because okay. since the previous line before it is a paragraph, the hub recognizes. Let's put it this way: the hub will analyze your document, and it will it doesn't recognize recognize the actual content. But as you've composed it, it says, okay, this previous line was normal, so it's now P. So this next line, because you've composed it as SL, it'll say, okay, this is the first line of some you know, large amount of poetry, so I'm going to make this SLF. So the hub looks for those patterns, and that's what 
um, it uses to actually compose the file uh, and give articulation for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good question. So this we already know is fig, but here um, we're gonna use a fig H uh, for figure head, right? So we're gonna go here, go to figure, and then do fig H. And this line, which is the attribute line or, or attribute line, excuse me, or, um, or the credit line or however you wanna call it is uh, fig ATR, which is for a uh, figure attribute. So we'll go ahead and compose that. This, as we can tell, is math. So we'll go ahead and use equations for that. I believe equations are under curriculum rather than, are they? No. This is in one of those instances where because EQ doesn't have a lot of, um, a lot of styles, they're subsumed under another heading. So in this case, as we already discussed a little bit earlier, we're gonna bring up the SCML list, which I have here. And we're just gonna search for equation. And we're gonna find that. It's actually under figure. There you go. I would say go figure, but that would be too corny. So EQ, we'll go ahead and make that, those three EQ. And now we're getting close to the end. So you can tell as we're going through that this might take some, some time, especially if you have a very large book. But usually what happens is, is as you're going through, uh, you'll notice a pattern. You'll notice what is, um, what is and isn't present in your, in your document. So you'll know which style galleries to have open, which ones, to, um, which ones not to have open, and so on and so forth. So it doesn't take as long. So it's, again, it's just a matter of practice. So here we see that this is indented in a special way and you have this little sort of almost a sidebar, which is what it is, of size. So we're gonna go ahead and open up our sidebar. Gallery, which is quite large. And the reason why is because sidebars often contain a lot of, um, they're almost like tiny little chapters within themselves. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and make this SB, SBH and make this SB. There you go. And right after that, we have a nice little text that says, Dear Reader, with comma, and it ends in that way, which indicates a letter. So we'll go ahead and bring up our formal letter style gallery. Okay. And so this is the letter greeting which is LTG, and then this is just the letter paragraph. Again, we're not worried about articulation or anything, so we'll just call it LT. And this is the complement, complementary close, so it's LTC. And this is the signature, so it's LT sig. And again, this, we're not gonna use sidebars or letters anymore, so, or sense lines are these, so we'll get rid of those. So here we get to a table and we'll, we know that this, just by reading a little bit, this is the table head. So we're, we're gonna go ahead and bring up our table. Style gallery. And so because this is the table head, we're gonna go ahead and make it TH and now it, We've discussed this already, but over here, when you're dealing with tables, because of the, word, the way that Word treats tables, it doesn't treat it as part of the same um, flow. You won't see these um, when you apply um, the TD paragraph style. So in this case, we're gonna go ahead and make a TD. We'll notice the, the visual change, but if we have this quick styles gallery up here, we can click on each one and we can see that they are composed as TD. Okay, again, we're leaving blank lines, we're leaving all of that. And finally, we come to this glossary 
uh, section at the end. All right. So we're going to go here, go to the curriculum guideline because I do believe glossary is there. And we're going to go ahead and compose those as GLO for glossary. All right. And with that, we've composed all of the uh, specialized paragraph. We've left uh, the regular paragraphs alone. Uh, one last thing that we will do before actually switching over to the hub um, is that we need to apply specialized um, uh, character styles. Um, and these are for sections like, for example, figurehead numbers um, or um, glossary terms um, or dialogue speakers. Um, and the reason that we compose those in a special way is just in case uh, when you are typesetting or designing um, your book, you want to treat the dialogue speaker, for example, with um, um, as small caps rather than bold or anything else. So uh, we give that that style so that we can uh, apply that um, throughout in an easy and efficient way. So we're going to go ahead and select. If you hold control, you can actually select on a PC, you can actually select just these sections and these are GT glossary terms and once you click on that you'll see that they'll change into a different color and if you click on the actual word you'll see that they're what they're composed as up here in this little box up here and so we know that we have dialogue so we're going to go back up to the dialogue here and do the same And as you can tell, you can apply styles using the style galleries to multiple selected items. You should though be careful uh, that you don't select something you don't want to be composed. That's what you will be composing it as. So in this case, we're gonna go ahead and open up our style gallery here. Go to dialogue. And these are dialogue speakers. And so DISPK is the style for that. And again, you'll see that it switched colors. And if we click on that, you'll see that they are DISPK here. Okay. And with that, um, we are actually done as far as we can be composing the file. Um, does anybody have any questions at this point? Karen, are we good to just go right into the hub or good? Okay. So what we'll do here, we'll go ahead and save our file. Close out of that. We'll go over to the digital hub. So that's actually another project I'm working on. So. So I'll, sorry, I will chime in. Uh, Elvis is going to basically show you um, how to upload the file into the hub and um, do the uh, um, composition check and, and refining. And then after this, you guys are going to uh, do it yourselves. So I just wanted to let you know that this is the demo preceding your hands-on time. Mm -hmm. Good transition. So uh, before we actually get to that, because Karen just did remind me um, of this, if you are ever in doubt about something that the hub can or cannot do, um, there is extensive documentation. If you click on Digital Hub and then Documentation here, you'll see that there's an explanation about everything that the hub can do in each little uh, section. I'll give brief descriptions of them, but if there's anything that we don't cover here in the demo, uh, just for the sake of time, you can always um, look in the documentation. And uh, you don't have to read it all and you don't have to know it all. We're not telling you or giving you that as homework, uh, but it's there if you need it. Um, and there's often uh, little checks um, here that will indicate uh, what certain things will do. So we went ahead and created our project, right? And so we have this and right now we don't have any files available. So it'll, it'll just tell us, click upload to add files. So we're gonna go ahead and listen and say upload, right? And you can either drag your files or click in here I just went ahead and clicked in here, and I'm gonna take this in-class document, which is the one that we are, um, that we currently worked on. I'm gonna hit open, and you'll see it appear here on the right. 
So, and you can upload multiple files. So they will all appear here list, listed here. If for some reason uh, there's something wrong with the name because the hub, for example, doesn't like spaces uh, in uh, file names, um, it'll tell you and it'll say the name of this file you know, may cause some, co um, some conversion issues and whatnot. And it'll tell you what to do to fix um, those small things. So the hub will always be checking your files as you're uploading them um, so that you can see, uh, so you can fix them. Um, so that every conversion goes smoothly because the intention of the hub and the whole purpose of the hub is a set of tools that we use to convert files from one state, from one format, Word in this case, um, either to Word again as a refined document or to SCML or to IDTT for typesetting um, and so on and so forth. And there's a plethora of different combinations that you can, um, that you can use uh, between a source file and your desired output. And I'll show you that now so i'm going to go ahead and click on this screen upload depending on your file size this might take a little bit also on your internet speed and what it'll do it'll tell you um, underneath files it'll give you each file you've uploaded in this case we've only uploaded a word file um, and you'll see uh, you'll see them listed here if we had uploaded other things like images or anything else they would also be listed by category here so you can easily uh, check what you've uploaded. Um, if you click on this details um, button, what it'll do, it'll show you the size of the file, uh, where the file came from, whether it's hub generated or you uploaded it, and when it was last um, uploaded or changed. Um, by the way, if you ever are working in this uh, sort of loop that uh, Kathy mentioned um, a couple classes ago where you're trying to get this little button, which I'll explain in a little bit, to go green, um, you don't have to delete the file and upload and delete the file and upload. Just upload the file with the same name, the hub will overwrite it, um, just as if you were moving files on your, um, on your machine. And so what you'll have here, you'll have the name, which you can actually change. Um, we don't recommend that. We just recommend that you name the files correctly, and then that way there's no confusion. Later on, that's what this button does. It allows you to edit the file name. And this little button under checks, this little circle, can be either red, yellow, green, or blue. Um, red means that there's a critical issue with your file. Uh, for example, maybe an author sent you a file um, and they just changed the extension to .x rather than actually saving the file as .x and they actually sent you an RTF file masquerading as a .x file. Um, we were actually talking about that uh, while we were preparing for this class and I ended up getting a file that did just that. It was actually an RTF file um, that was just changed. So um, you can often fix that easily by just resaving the file in Word as docx. Um, and the hub for Word only accepts docx files because of the underlying structure um, that the styles um, apply. Um, regular .doc files don't preserve that. Uh, neither does RTF. And so if you click on this, so red means uh, critical error, and you'll need to fix that before you continue. Yellow means that there are some kind, there is some kind of error, but um, you know it might be something. For example, in this case, that you can ignore something that you know. For example, that there are things in here that are not in SCML. Um, if it is blue, it is indicating that there is also some kind of issue, but it is very minor, and it will still convert your file. The hub will still convert your file. And if it's green, that means that the hub detected no issues, which is what you want to get. So when you first upload a file and you're going to refine it, uh, especially if you have not, um, if you have not um, uh, uh, composed the regular paragraphs, that um, you'll get this yellow button, and that's okay. Um, you don't want this yellow button when you're ready to send this to the typesetter or when you're ready to convert to IDTT. At that point, you want the button to be green. I see some things glowing in the chat. Okay, there you go. Yep, green equals perfection. Green means go. So um, you always want to go for green, right? So we're going to go ahead and if you click on this, it will actually give you um, the errors. And these errors are all described in that documentation I mentioned earlier. Uh, but here we'll see non-SML paragraph style. We know that because there's, you know, normal web, there's still stuff in there that we know that we didn't compose because the hub is going to take care of that for us. So this is okay at this point. Now, if you see uh, uh, an error like mismatched 
uh, note references or anything like that, that would be something that you would want to check. But things like non-SML paragraph style or unstyled content in this um, like pre-refiner stage is perfectly fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And just to give you the complete tour, if you click on this stats button, it'll give you just that st uh, statistics about the file. So it'll tell you uh, the word count, character count, uh, which we here at Scribe use for estimating um, you know, how long or how difficult something might be. Um, it'll also give you a breakdown of all the styles that are currently used in, um, in that file. So in this case, we know it'll highlight also uh, in yellow, uh, depending on your screen, it might look like a little beige, um, but it'll also highlight styles that are not SCML styles, so you'll know exactly what to look for just in case the hub doesn't take care of it. And it'll also give you a list of all the special character styles and um, how to find them in Sublime, which we'll talk about in another class. And it'll list all the images that are called out and as how they are called out in the, um, in the file. So in this case, we're gonna go ahead and close out of that. So to convert, we'll use this conversion section up here. If you click this box over on the left, this is your source box. Um, here we've only uploaded Word files, so, so you will only see MS Word. Now if you had uploaded uh, different types of files, you will see them here, different types of files that the hub can actually uh, ingest. So you'll see those pop up once you click on this little box here, right? And then over here we have our output uh, box. So we'll, we, what we want is a refined MS Word document, right? And you can see that you can go directly from MS Word to EPUB v2, uh, EPUB3, uh, HTML, IDTT, SAM, and SCML. Um, I know a lot of those are common, but SAM and SCML um, are uh, the scribe, sort of scribe language. Um, style SAM being an intermediary file, but we're not gonna get too far into that because that gets into uh, a little bit more technical stuff. So we want a refined MS Word document. Over here you'll have the settings and you'll see that the settings that are um, that are checked by default are art articulate spacing distinctions for MS Word and apply SML template definition. So both of these are on by default. You can actually click on this little eye icon and as I mentioned before uh, it'll explain what um, what that setting actually does. Right, so you'll see here, if enabled, the hub will apply the compositional distinctions, first, last, and standalone variations necessary to achieve proper spacing. For example, extra space above and so on. And here, in SML template definitions, um, it'll clear any locally applied paragraph formatting in the MS Word um, um, refiner, so in the document itself. And then you'll have down here a couple options for footnotes. So I'll just show you something quickly. If you go from MS Word to SCML, the settings change um, as long uh, with uh, depending on what conversion you're trying to do. Um, I won't sit here and explain those, but um, you'll see that as you go through, they are all a little bit different. But you don't have to worry about that because it does it automatically depending on what output you've selected. So we'll go ahead, click Edit Settings. We don't want to do anything with the notes. We don't want to place them at section breaks. Or EndNotes, we're not worried about that, but they're there if you need um, if you need them. So the only two that we'll have applied are the t default ones. So we'll go ahead and click on those two uh, and make sure that they're selected and then click Save. Here, then we'll just click Convert and that will actually get the hub working. And again, depending on the size of your file and the complexity of it, it may take a little bit. Um, in this case, it was quite an easy file uh, just because it was simplified. And so you'll see that now our dot is green. If we click here, it's still showing me the errors for uh, the previous one. Sometimes it does that, but as long as you have your nice little green button, you're good to go, right? And so what we'll want to do now, if we click this button here, we can download this file. Um, if you are working in your, um, in your downloads, folder as I am doing now for this demo, um, both Word and, um, excuse me, both Windows and Mac will just append something to the end of it so that you don't have two files named the same. So we'll, we're just gonna go ahead and go with that. So I'll go here, it's this one 
file over here. And so just go ahead and change this view really quickly. And as you can see, our blank lines were all blown away so that we, we didn't have to wor worry about it. Our spacing distinction was added. The hub, by the way, just defaults to EPF um, when you have that. Um, but you could, depending on your situation, use EP or EPF as we discussed in last class. Uh, and so you'll see that all the regular paragraphs are now P. And this one, which we mentioned in the beginning, is now PF. Right? So we'll go through. It took this one and made it PF. Right? So it, what the hub does, it first converts it to P, and then it uses uh, the patterns that it knows it recognizes. Like, for example, uh, an A head, uh, a paragraph after an A head is always P aft, or after B head, or any type of head, actually. Um, so it went ahead and composed it as P aft. You see here, it didn't give the NLF distinction um, because um, the head actually takes care of the space. Um, above that NL, so you don't need to have NLF right after a head that would create too much space. Um, and that's in that um, articulation um, documentation I sent last class. And so you'll see that our block quote is now BQS, right, for space, that stands for block quote standalone, space above, with space above and space below, as you can see rendered there. Our bullet, bulleted list became BLF, and so on and so forth throughout. You see DIAF, DIL, all the way down to the end. There you go. And so that is a really quick overview of how you refine a document. And now since we know that this is green and good to go, if we were to make any change to this document, like for example, um, we realize that this CRT really should be P, that's not correct, but we go ahead and change that. I just changed that quickly um, and then re-upload this file, we would, like the hub isn't going to change that uh, for you again. If, for example, it's incorrect, you would have to run the refiner and even then it would not change this um, just because it sort of respects the choice that you, uh, that you gave it. And I believe with that, that is it for the hub and I think we're right on time. So I don't know if does anybody have any Questions, concerns? I know that was a little bit technical, but I think uh, it was straight to the point. I have a question. Sure. Are there any um, aft first or last tags that it won't recognize? Mm, in what sense? Like, can you give me an example? Is there ever a case where I would have to manually care about adding the F or L version of whatever it is? Like, right. paragraphs don't, but does that apply also to every other kind of thing that has a first and last? Right. So the, the hub has its patterns and for the most part, I would say like 90%, you don't have to worry about that. But like I mentioned down here in the sense lines, where are we? in the sense line, like the hub, if I would have composed this as SL, it wouldn't have added the SLF here because the hub will treat that as if it's just the continuation of the same stanza. So things that require a little bit of, context or human eye, um, you'll have to worry about that. So essentially, most of it can be automated, but things like this, or for example, um, as I mentioned, PCON, um, paragraph continued. So like you have, you know, your paragraph, it's interrupted by a figure, and then the paragraph continues afterward. That second paragraph needs to be composed as PCON by you, the human, because um, the, the hub will treat it like a regular paragraph otherwise. Does that answer the question? Do we have any? Yes. Okay, good. Except in that case, should the SLL be added to the last of each stanza? Uh, so you wouldn't want that because you don't, as part of that articulation, the, the way that we sort of explain it, uh, this is going a little bit technical, um, is that L adds space below and F adds space above. So if you have an L oh. before an F, you created too much space. Um, so you don't want that. Uh, so you want to just either have one or the other, and we always build space above. So we always have SLF. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Any other questions? I'll stop sharing now. I'd just like to take a step back and say that Elvis walked us through the how-to of using the hub and the refiner. And just to point out um, that the hub is your sort of machine partner uh, to your human self in the composition process. And um, just as to, I think it was Adam's question, um, you will be responsible for um, seeing things with your eye, but then the hub is going to help you do it as consistently as possible. Since your eye is going to miss things, the hub is going to miss things. It's the idea of a perfect uh, human machine combination. Um, and so that is part of the value of the hub and the refiner is sort of filling in those, those blanks, if you will. Um, and working together with you to make sure that your composition is okay. And then as Elvis has said many times, if, a, if the hub is telling you your composition is not okay and you can't figure out what's going on, then they're there to um, help with that. Any other questions about how this fits into the well-formed document workflow, why we're doing it, how to do it? All right, so now is the you try part. Um, you have all created your projects, which is why we um, had you guys do that at the top of the class. And so if you could please try uploading your homework file and tell us what you see, tell us how it goes. We'll, we'll um, wait for a few minutes and then if you can give us a signal once you've done that, either in the chat or with your voice, that would be great. Button wherever that is. On the SAI tab, the file check. File check, yep. And then it does the same thing as clicking the yellow dot mm -hmm. ended up doing, but it told me that I had a few instances of style two, which is bold, mm -hmm. and I, emphasis, which is italics, and then uh, normal, which it converted automatically. And so then I just, um, here, let me, uh, should I share it? Please. Mm -hmm. um, Let's see. Okay, so I didn't know how to find where I had those things. And so I actually went up to the home ribbon and under styles just found the ones that I had, which were emphasis and then uh, style two is somewhere up here. And then I don't have it anymore, but you can select all. So select all with that style and it selects all of them throughout the document. And then I went back to SAI and just made it bold all at once. And then did the same in selecting emphasis and changing them all to I. And I don't know if that's right, but that's what I did. So I didn't actually look at each instance. It might have not been what was intended, but I took any instance of existing italics and made it I that way. So that's what I did. And that was the only other issues that there were. I had to remove a bunch of structure tags that I had added. And again, I don't know if everything is right, per se. Super, thank you. I saw Adam hit upon the, that's actually part of the trick, right? Um, because a style two and emphasis, um, I believe the hub will leave them alone uh, if you just go through it. Um, and that's why you'll keep getting yellow, um, but it'll tell you like, hey, there's this style and there's this. And so as Adam pointed out, the file check in the SAI uh, will do, um, it does a little bit less than the hub does, um, but is also it is also a good tool. Like if you don't want to do the back and forth, um, you can actually just click on that file check. It'll give you a report and it'll tell you, just like Adam said, you have emphasis in style two, which are not SM uh, CML styles and that, uh, you can then fix those and that will then give you that nice little green dot. So, okay. so the, the process is when you find this, then you have to go back to your original document, make the change and re-upload it. Is that what it is? You could do it that way. Although if you've already refined, you can actually just download that file, edit it and upload the file that you downloaded. Okay. Yeah. So there are multiple ways to do it. Converted. What do you mean by refined? Do you mean it's... Uh -huh, go ahead. 
Do you mean it like modified all your normal and everything? Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Cause you always want to work with, and that's sort of um, one of those things that just comes up. You always want to work with the most up to date uh, file. So if you've already gone through the refiner, uh, then um, you shouldn't go back. You should treat your previous file like it, like it's file and deal with the one that you have. Unless, of course, there is something like, oh, no, I managed to delete you know, an entire chapter before refining it. At that point, yeah, then you, you should go to your old file. But um, we always try to go with working on the most up-to-date file. So in this case, it would be your refined document. Mm -hmm. But if you want to redo the, like, for instance, um, was it Sunny who said, I mean, she hadn't fixed all the things that we learned that needed fixing. Mm -hmm. So do you want to, we should be going back to our original file for that or? or okay, in the, I, see, I see what you're saying. So if there are structural so, issues, like let's say somebody has given you feedback and said, well, you know, you made all these P when they should be this or this other yeah, thing, yeah. Then, you, then at that point, it might be best to just go back and work with your file at that point. Uh, okay. But it's always, yeah, it's, I don't know what the word would be. There's a word for it, but it's essentially, it depends upon what kind of feedback you're getting. If your feedback is just change all this style to bold, you know, then, then you should just do that. Well, um, mm -hmm. that's the, that's the only feedback I got was the same emphasis in that style okay. too, but, but, but you hadn't gone back, but I didn't, you know, when I learned that the discourse one discourse mm -hmm. two should be, chapter numbers mm -hmm. i didn't go back and do that to to discourse two got it okay so i need to do that in the i can't do it in file. this file i have to do it in my old file yeah right? i would do that in your old file yep okay so we had an awesome surprise green dot do we have any red dots oh no God. okay that's a relief <laughs> So did the rest of you have yellow dots, like Myra? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. Um, would somebody volunteer to show us your yellow dot file? I can go ahead and show it. Kind of messy. Super. <laughs> Perfect. That's what we're going for. <laughs> uh, if I can find it. <laughs> Got all these screens all over the place. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I, I keep renaming it too. So um, again, it's a mess. Let's see. Okay, so this is the first time I'm sharing. So I'm going to do. Oops. I think you got it. Yep. Really? Yeah, we can see your desktop. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which is very neat. <laughs> well, I have three screens, so all kinds of things are happening here. Mm. So, okay, so as you can see, I got notes all over it. Is, is this what you wanted to look at, or did you want to look at the long list of errors? Well, right now, all we can see is your desktop. We can't see the Word file. Yeah. Oh, that's right. So you're seeing. That so might be one of your screens. Drag your file over to um, the main screen, right? Yeah. Now can you see the uh, Word yeah. document. We got it. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm not exactly sure what you want me to demonstrate here, or, but or did you want to see the um, errors, the list of errors from? Um, I think we can start with that. Yeah. yeah, I think we should start with the errors. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Okay. So the hub. All right, so this is the, I'm going to pull over the hub screen. Yeah. Is that what you're looking for? Yep. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, I misdirected you, I think. Oh, sorry. So uh, what, where do you want me to go for here? This is it? Yeah, I think, yeah, you have it right on the, right where we need to see it. So I see that you have... Uh, list paragraph still, so that means that there's a numbered list that isn't um, that isn't composed. Um, and then you have like the emphasis in style two, which are the two things that Adam had mentioned uh, before. And there is some other unstyled content, but the hub does not display it just because 
um, oftentimes that means that it's either a lot or it's often like a blank line or something that's that's composed in a in a weird way. So now what we'll want to do is we'll want to go back to your file. Okay. And we're gonna look for that list paragraph. All right, you'll have to tell me where to go. Okay, uh, you are on a Windows PC. So if you hit uh, Control H, okay. right, and you see where it says more, you can go ahead and click on that on the bottom left. Yep. Um, then format on the bottom left again. Oh, and this up. Yeah, okay. this I'm showing you something a little bit different. Um, you can actually search for styles in Word. So if you see that um, second one from the bottom right that says style. Um, and now you can't like type it in because Word just doesn't let you for some weird reason. But you can, this list is alphabetical and you can go, um, if you hit like L, it'll jump down to all the L's. So we'll need to find list paragraph in that list. So you want to scroll down. Might actually be past all this because there's list, but not okay. this paragraph. So, so L dash P is that what I'm looking for? Uh no, it should actually just say it straight, like uh, capital L I S T space capital P uh, paragraph. Capital. Uh, just the words. Yeah, just the word. Yeah. List paragraph. Yeah, so it'll it'll probably be further down. All right. Yeah, you you've passed the L's, which is okay because sometimes there are. Um, they're a little bit out of order sometimes, uh, depending on word styles. Word is a little bit weird, just so you know. I found uh, that uh, most of the inbuilt styles are at the very end. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and for me, my list paragraph is the last item, so I don't know if that'll be at the very end. Okay. Level. Yeah, that yeah. might help. So go ahead and scroll down all the way to the bottom. Ooh, okay. There's list bullet. So scroll down a little bit further. Thank you. Yep. That list number. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this paragraph is hiding. Okay. So just, uh, yeah, yeah, this is odd. Uh, There's another list number there. Um, try doing this right there. Um, just hit L until you hit this paragraph. That also helps you search. So it'll go down like one by one. I'll go through all the uh, scribe styles. There's list. Wow, this is going to be a while. <laughs> so this way, searching styles is what I tried first, but I didn't find it easy enough, and I never found any of the ones I was looking for. Which okay. is when I went back to the home styles and just looked at the Did it from the top? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's do that. Let's do okay. that. So okay. I'm going to cancel? Yeah, cancel out of that. Okay. And cancel the other way. Cancel this one? Yeah, you can close that. Yep. Okay. And then go to home. Right. And then it should be the drop down right next to styles. Yeah. This one here? Yep. Now okay. Be careful not to click. Uh, oh, yeah, it happened. So the one, the one caveat with this is that if you have like your cursor selected, and you uh -huh. click on a style, it will actually style it just like the style galleries. So yeah, that's a, that's a common issue. Uh, we'll deal with that one later. For now, let's scroll down and let's find this paragraph. It should be towards the end. Maybe I should move this. Hmm. Yeah, probably have to scroll that list. Yeah. Ooh. Painful. Yeah. At this point, I've done this so much, it's like second nature, so. <laughs> okay. Okay. I don't see anything obvious here. So at the, the very last one. Yeah, the last one. Oh, here it is. Okay. There. So Thank right you. click on that. Right. Mm -hmm. And select all 10 instances. You see that? So what that has done, it has gone through and selected um, all 10 instances of Liz paragraph. Okay. Right. Uh -huh. So now you can go into the style galleries and make those NL. So if you go to SAI, right. uh, style galleries, 
And which doll gallery is that again? That would be numbered list. Numbered list. And then okay. And then you can just call it NL. NL? Mm -hmm. Oops. Was that a, it didn't seem to change all of them. It just changed mm -hmm. the last one. Should yeah. we select? Um, actually, yeah, select it using your cursor. It might be an issue just with that version of Word. Let's see, try that. Okay. There that it looks is. more normal. Yep. There we go. So that took care of the list paragraph styles. Now, scroll all the way up to the top, to the uh, front matter section. Because I remember one of those styles changed. Yeah. If you see the one that starts with Daniel Steffen, mm -hmm. Brothers of the Empire, okay, that you should, um, in this case, we'll just change it back to P. Uh, those should be CRT. But, um, yeah, just go ahead and... Uh, convert that uh, back to P. So I think P is under body. Okay, so that's body. There you okay. go. Okay, so that took care of that first error. Now, the other, um, the other two errors are the ones that um, need to be taken care of. Um, emphasis and style two. So we're going to do the same thing that Adam um, so kindly showed us how to do, right? So we're going to go to home and then the little drop down again. <laughs> and this time we're going to look for emphasis. And They're I would, towards the bottom, end. Yeah. yeah. This one? Yep. And right click on that okay. and select all. Okay. So the, this one should actually convert them all in one shot. So go to SAI now. And now you should just go to style galleries and then common character styles. You won't need to load that one because that one is already there. So you can cancel out this one. Okay. Yeah. And it's that first thing right underneath. Oh, this one. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And those are just the common ones. And then just click I because emphasis is for is this the right one? Am I hovering mm. over the right one? <laughs> you are hovering over the right one. <laughs> okay. There we go. And we should see, yep, I see the green uh, right there where you see a fig ATR. You see source. Uh, okay. That is now green. That indicates that it is italic. So style two is the other one that you need to do. So go ahead and do that same process for style two, except you're going to be changing it to bold rather than bold. Uh, rather than italic. Okay, so get back to home. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to look for style two. Mm -hmm. Style two. Okay. These are an alpha? Um, the, for our SML styles are, but word styles just end up getting dropped at the end. Um. So it's um, like the fifth up from the bottom towards the right, like, yeah, on the screen. To, to the, the right of the red. Oh, the red ones, yeah. There's STS, yeah, two more to the right, style two right there. Yep. Okay, so, so. right click this one. Mm -hmm. 21 instances, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. <laughs> there you go. And, and now you're going to make those bold, which is B. There you go. Okay, I'm glad this is all being recorded. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay, so I think we should upload this to the hub again and see mm -hmm. how it goes. Make sure to save. Make sure to save. <laughs> really? Okay, I'll save it. <clears throat> all right. And then, so I'm back here. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to close this, right? Correct. And then you want to go to upload on the right. All right. And I'm going to have to find that file. Oh, here we are. All right. You know, sometimes when, you know, something is shared, I can't get to anything of my own. 
Oh. If you double click on your screen, it'll reduce the zoom view. To a window. Aha, great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you'll still have the yellow button, but there should only be one error now. Let's see. Oh, there's still an instance of style two somewhere. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. Well, we did have an error reduction. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So you saw that the li this paragraph went through, and and so this is the process. You just go through until all of them are just gone. Now. In this case, because we're going to refine it, you will have that last one unstyled content that will stay. You're not uh -huh. gonna, um, that's not gonna get blown away until you actually refine the document using the hub. So that, er that unstyled content is okay as long as you know that there is unstyled content. But things like um, the style two um, style there, which the hub will probably leave alone and say, I don't know what this is, so I'm not going to touch it. Uh, that one you should take care of. And so it's that process until you're eliminating the errors that you know uh, shouldn't be there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, in order to clear this one up, I would just go back and uh, look for that style, that last instance or two of style two. Mm -hmm. And change it to bold. Okay. And then just upload it again, refine it. And you'll be good to go. And not worry about this part. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Thank you for volunteering, Sunny. <laughs> <laughs> now, how do I get out of here? <laughs> Can I do I click on new share? No. How do I? <laughs> uh, how do I unshare? <laughs> oh, stop share. Yeah. Are we ready for me to stop share? <laughs> yeah. <Nope>. Okay. <laughs> so, Elvis, how will we know when the manuscript is properly composed? So the way that you know that the file is properly composed because the hub is not um, checking for correctness in a certain sense, it's only checking for like correctness according to um, itself, um, you'll have to have somebody look at that file. So you either have an expert look at it or you have us look at it, which, which we are experts, right? Um, and you can send the files to us and we can tell you, give you feedback and say, hey, you know, you're, this should actually be this or this, you need the human eye. Um, at that point. So once uh, we give you the go-ahead, once we've um, QC'd, done the quality checks on any file you send us, then you'll know for sure um, that that is um, that that is 100% correct. Now, if, for example, you have somebody in your team that is, like they say, I want to become the expert composition person, we have the QC checklist that we use. We have those available on our website. Um, so it's under documentation quality control checklist and you can just go through those yourself and that will also give you an indication that you know this is good to go uh, in the beginning we do recommend that you just contact us and just have us take a quick look at it um, but um, as you have people on your team that become experts you'll have people who will say will be your checks uh, in other words mm -hmm. so back to you Karen well um, Sunny just demonstrated as Adam already has done the homework for uh, next week, which is to keep working on the file until you get a uh, fairly refined um, file without a lot of errors and just kind of going through that process to get to know the relationship between composition and bringing it into the hub and using the refiner and aiming for a green dot, if at all possible. Mm -hmm. um, so connecting this to project management is kind of the last um, piece of information we would like to leave you with today. Um, so, you know, as project manager, you may be composing the file or someone on your team may be composing the file or you may ask Scribe to compose the file. Again, there are options um, at Virginia Tech, for example, um, Anita and Corinne are a team Anita, I think, works directly with a faculty author on the project management piece and the author communication and emailing back and forth and that relationship. And then Corinne is there on the team, I think, more behind the scenes of that relationship, doing the composing of the file. So there could be a setup like that, or perhaps as project manager, you'll be doing both. Or as I said, um, you'll manage the relationship and ask Scribe to do the composing. Elvis, is there anything you'd like to add? to the project management piece? 
I think that the the only thing is just um, to reiterate that you could always send the files to us. You don't have to like, for example, as I said at the beginning of the class, if you are not like comfortable with composing or something. Um, or you just don't want to or don't have the time for it, um, you could always send it to us and we'll, you know, we'll provide you with a bid for that service. Um, remember that we are here to help. So, for example, if you do choose to compose it yourself, you do have us to, to sort of guide you and help you uh, through that. Um, and lastly, if you, as Karen said, if you have somebody on your team who's going to be the composing person, um, be it like a student or um, or another um, another member of your institution, um, they are also welcome to contact us uh, for for that. So you're not alone in this. And um, also, as a project manager, you may have m way too much to do and way too much uh, to do when it comes to interaction with the authors or anything like that. And you may not take on composition yourself. So uh, we want to make it clear that even though we're teaching you composition, it doesn't mean that you have to do composition yourself. We're teaching you this so that you can see everything that's going on uh, because as a project manager, um, you'll have um, that leg up because you'll know, um, you know what the composing person is doing or even what we're doing here at Scribe um, when we are helping out with any, uh, any project. So um, yeah, I think that's, that's it on my end. And Mike, can I ask you just to chime in in terms of when you receive a composed file and might be typesetting, um, what that sort of composed file means to you or what you appreciate about it? I know we didn't talk about talking about this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so um, since I'm primarily a typesetter, I don't do a lot of composition. Uh, people compose things before they send them to me, and I flow them into InDesign. And... I depend on the people before me in the chain to have properly understood what the author is trying to get at so that I can just concentrate on rendering each of those elements in a way that will show the reader uh, what, you know, how to slot that information to their brain, right? <laughs> um, how to interpret uh, each of those elements and you know, whilst I'm going along, I may occasionally see something that looks like a composition error and ask the person who composed it, hey, are you sure that this was this? Because it seems a little odd to me. And sometimes it's right and sometimes it's wrong. So, um, yeah, but having that structure that, that the skeleton of the job already there means I can focus, focus on um, putting the flesh on the skeleton, so to speak. Thanks. So. So I think that's a nice reminder in terms of how this fits into the well-formed document workflow and also sets up multiple checks along the way because Michael expects a composed file to have certain consistency. And so if you see something that makes him go, hmm, um, he has the opportunity to go back to the composer and say, you know, is this what was intended? So, um, so yeah, we did it. We've done some composing. We brought things into the hub and we used the refiner today. So for your homework, using the SDML list and um, what you learned today, please polish your homework file until ideally you get a green dot. Uh, thanks to Myra last week for sending her homework questions. You're all invited uh, to do that again this week. Thanks to Sunny for chiming in. You're all invited to chime in. Um, are there any questions that you have uh, in order to go forward and do your homework? Or like Adam, just enjoy the week. <laughs> well we get together tomorrow for the other workshop right we do yes i look forward to seeing you tomorrow in the webinar and then uh we'll have two more meetings left uh quality control and vetting on march 20th and packing up files and wrapping up our orientation on march 27th and then you'll get your wednesdays back mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you for joining us and for uh, being willing to learn something new and sometimes be put on the spot. I hope that you all have a good week. And until then, um, have a good week. Okay. <laughs>